Before we get to the general part, let's remember what the derivatives of inverse trig functions are. So, what was the first one that we learned together? Sine, right? The derivative of sine inverse is... Good. Okay, so you've got 1 over a semicircle, okay? Um, it's the positive one, which makes cos inverse... Uh, the same thing but negative, yeah? How do you remember which one's which? Apart from, I just remember because my memorizing skills are awesome. When you go from cos to sine, negative, it's negative. Oh, okay. I, I hadn't thought about it that way. I suppose when you differentiate cos, you get minus sine. So you differentiate cos, is it? Yeah, okay, that works. Um, I like to have the picture of the graphs in my head, okay, because you need to know the graphs anyway. Right? There's sine and there's cos. So one is increasing, one is decreasing. That's where you get a plus or minus from. Okay? And just to complete the set, what's the derivative of tan inverse? One and one Good. Uh, no square root, and also on the bottom it's a plus because you used the um, sec squared plus one identity, I think, or tan squared plus one equals sec squared. Right, now, you guys know how to differentiate inverse trig functions. You know how chain rule works. So in some senses, kind of don't need to give this lesson. But in my experience, there have been enough um, little tricks and traps and unusual things that come out of these results that it's worth me actually working through with you. Okay, So let's just do a simple one. What's the derivative of sine inverse? And let's change the in in inside function to be x squared. Okay. Now... You guys are so familiar now with chain rule that probably you could start doing this straight away and you wouldn't need to do the substitution, okay? But just for the sake of it, just to be careful, let's go ahead and introduce uh, a new function, right? So what would you pick? Just x squared, right? The inside function, okay? So over here, you get this derivative. So there's one, okay? I can rewrite this as d on dx of... So, okay? So... What do I do now? What do <coughs> I do now? Yeah, good. So I'm going to do this one, which is just like this. It's just that... Oh, sorry. I should have changed that to a... Right. So I'm going to differentiate that. Okay. One on... But I want to multiply that by du on dx, so I get the du's cancelling. Yes, which is the chain rule. So there's my 2x. Yeah. And all I have to do is substitute back. I'll put the 2x back on the top there, I suppose. 1 minus x to the 4. No big deal. Okay. Now, you tell me, where do you think most people fall down on this? Where do you think is the most common error? Yeah. The Up here? Under the square root wait, 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 hold on. I'll get to you in a sec. What were you saying, Justin? Top is the a, so you have to differentiate. People forget to differentiate this. No yeah, that's that's one error. What was the other one you were talking about, Richard? Um, they didn't square the whole function under the square. Yeah, okay, so we've got two things you want to look out for. I think this is both important. Uh, most people, if they don't write out the full-on chain rule with u's and x's and that kind of thing, okay, they'll go straight from here to this step, but they'll forget to square, okay? Um, very, very, very common. So you don't end up with x to the 4 here, you end up with x squared, which is actually what you meant to have before, okay? All right, let's do another quick one. How about... The derivative of tan inverse of the square root of x. Tan inverse of the square root of x. Okay, let's see if we can do it this time without writing it out full form. Okay, what's the first thing you would write down? Should we do the inside or the outside? Doesn't really matter which one would you first. Let's do the inside, shall we? What's the derivative of the square root of x? x to the half. Hmm. Do I need to write it out over here? The derivative of x to the half. Bring the power out. Power reduces. Okay, so this is 1 on 2 root x. Right? Okay, now what? 1 on... Now, here's what I used to have, right? But the function isn't x, it's the square root of x. So therefore, it'll be 1 plus just x. Okay, well, that's kind of it. I mean, I can put them together as one fraction, but you don't really gain anything. We're done. That's fine. Okay. Now, 
These are all simple, right? But I want to use this idea and have a think about some of the results we've looked at before and see if it'll shed some light, okay? So, I want you to think back to when we were doing um, graphing and we looked at this function, um, sine inverse of sine x. Remember this guy? Okay, now, don't blurt it out, but just mentally get in your head what the picture of this one is. Remember that this inside function is periodic. Right? So therefore, when you take the whole thing, you end up getting the periodic version. It's not the one that's just restricted in a particular domain. Okay. So what would the derivative of this thing be? Okay, I want you to have a think about it. I'll give you a few minutes to get a head start on me. Um, I know we could just say, all right, that's equal to x in a certain domain, and then differentiate that, and you know what the derivative of that is, right? But I want us to consider it from this angle. In mathematics, this is often the way it is. You take one problem, and you look at it from two different angles, and you often get um, a new revelation of you know, what you understood before or what you knew to be the case but you didn't understand why. Okay? So I'll give you a few minutes to differentiate that. I'll give you a tip. There's a trick involved. And um, we'll come together and see what we get. Okay? Off you go.